Uh, we'll start with an opening statement about the first week of practice and then open up uh, the floor for questions. Uh, well, you know, we, we've obviously finished one week. Uh, feels like a little longer than that, but we've had 10 practices uh, during that time. We've had a couple two a days. Uh, we've had a couple days off in there uh, this weekend. We went three times during the two days this weekend. Uh, had officials late last week. Uh, for the first time, we'll have officials come in again on Tuesday. And, uh, and we're progressing. Um, you know, there have been some good days, some bad days. I'm not going to sit here and act like uh, every day has been great. Uh, but we are working hard uh, to get better. And, uh, and I think that's the most important thing right now. Our effort uh, has been pretty consistent. Uh, there have been days that the turnovers have been a little high. But, uh, but our effort has been good. And, uh, and right now, that's what I'm really focusing on, is, is making sure that we're working hard, playing hard, uh, and playing through adversity. Uh, Chris Evans earlier this week uh, tweeted a picture of uh, Randall practicing. How's the injury coming along? You know, uh, Randall would tell you that right now he feels 75% uh, with his strength and 65% with his conditioning. That's what he would tell you. In fact, that's what he told me yesterday. So. Uh, we have to work on his conditioning and getting him stronger and getting him ready. We have uh, 19 days before we play, and um, we're going to step up some of the conditioning stuff for him starting today. But uh, I did get a report that in the weight room he's doing everything that the rest of the, t of the team is doing, and um, he's getting back. You know, I, I hope that he'll be where he needs to be uh, for the start of the season. Uh, I'm going to play that by ear. I haven't made a decision on that yet. I need to see how he is, uh, you know, out there. Uh, right now, he's doing all of our dummy drills. He's doing all of our um, all of our shooting drills with the team. The only thing he's not doing with the team is when we do anything live. Uh, and, and what we've got to do a better job with him these next uh, week in particular is when we're not doing stuff live with him, that he's on the side. Uh, doing sprints or doing some sort of conditioning. Because I think right now, to, to his credit, he's done a great job in the weight room. He weighs, weighed in at 184 yesterday. Uh, as a freshman, he weighed in the one, I think he might have weighed like 151 or one, 147, high 140s. So he's, he last year he played at 170 so or 168. So he's done a great job. It's all good weight, OK? But uh, the challenge for him is not only is he trying to get back but he's also got to get himself in shape playing with more weight. And it's good weight. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not like he, he's not uh, done a good job. He's gotten much stronger. All of those things are positive. But the conditioning aspect becomes a little bit harder because he's, he's trying to get himself in shape at a higher weight. Just Randall today, huh? Chris is doing well. Chris is doing well. Chris Brewer, uh, you know, he's getting better. And just like all these guys, I think Chris, you know, I've told Chris privately that, that I need him to be a junior, even though he's only a sophomore. And, and what I mean with that is that he's got to be more mature than what a sophomore normally would be. And uh, that's, that's not easy for him because he, he's a sophomore. He played 10 minutes a game last year. Uh, but I need more out of him. And I think he knows that. Uh, he's working at it, uh, and again, that's an everyday deal. You just gotta, you gotta get better each day. Chris's strength. Chris's strength. First of all, he's incredibly fast. I mean, incredibly fast. He moves from one side of the floor to the other side of the floor as as good as anybody. He's in great shape. He can play all day long. Uh, he's he can score. He can make some plays for guys. He's he's uh, Rod Sherman. Esque, I guess, would be how I would describe him in that he's sort of a combo guard who can, who can shoot it, he can get in the lane, he can finish. Uh, he just has to learn to play the game. Uh, what, what I tell him is that sometimes you can't go with 85. You know, not everything's the Autobahn. Sometimes you got to be in a school zone and you got to go 25. So that's sort of what he's learning is pace of play, changing up. Sometimes I got to go fast. If there's nothing there, then I got to slow down. Learning those things, and and there's nobody better to teach him that than than DeAndre. So he's got a great guy that that he's with a lot, who's uh, 
who's helping him along. Yeah, you know, and, and, and they, they didn't add Brian Frank, who's a senior. I know sometimes he gets overlooked because he's a walk-on. Uh, but Brian's been here a while, and Brian's done a great job with our guys as well. Uh, really done a good job because Brian's more vocal. And, and, and Brian also has nothing to lose because he knows he's not playing a bunch. And he's really back here purely for the reason of trying to win. So uh, his leadership has, has been really good. Uh, getting back to your question with Chris Evans, uh, Chris has done a good job. He's working harder. Uh, he's staying more positive. You know, one of the things that Chris needs to work on just in general is sometimes he allows his emotions to, to get high and get low and, uh, you know, to, to sulk a little bit. He's really, really working hard to not let that happen, and I think he's done a good job with it. Not a, he's done a great job with it so far. You know, we, we scrimmage, we brought officials in, and uh, it's, it's funny because I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but we had a freshman lead us in scoring and rebounding. So, uh, and that was Chris Ortiz. And that's good because it's good that he led us. But if I were to tell you the last time that happened, it would probably be never. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So, uh, I do think Mark Henniger is getting better. Uh, I think he looks different than he was last year. I think he's playing with much more confidence. Uh, I think that uh, Darren Goodson's starting to pick it up. I think after that scrimmage, when we watched some film the last couple of days of practice, he's he's uh, he's really stepped up his game. Uh, Melvin Tab has gotten better. Uh, he can do some things that we haven't had a post player do here uh, with his ability to drive the ball from the perimeter. Uh, we haven't had somebody be able to do that in a while. And he's a really good offensive rebounder when he gets his mind to it. We just got to get his mind to it a little bit more. Um, so that we're progressing. You know, the, the thing about him uh, is that there's five front court guys, uh, Kalik Spicer, Chris Ortiz, Melvin Tab, Mark Hanager, and Darren Goodson. Those five are the guys that will play up front. Uh, you know, the only one with experience is Mark. And, uh, and all of them will be here for this year and next year. So, you know, I think we'll continue to get better. I think each of those guys has some strengths. And, uh, you know, each of those guys is, is working hard to, to prove that they should play. Yeah, yeah, we have a closed scrimmage this Saturday at St. Bonaventure. No question, because we've had some freshmen play well, and we've had guys like Chris Brewer play well. Well, you know, are they playing well because uh, he's playing against Darren? Chris Ortiz playing good because he's playing against Darren Goodson? Is Henny playing good because he's playing against Kalik Spicer? Or is Henny playing good because he's gotten better? I'll find out much more on Saturday. Uh, you know, Chris Brewer. And uh, Bryce and Pope have been running the point along with Kellen Thomas. Uh, be interesting to see how they're able to handle it with other guys, because I don't know if they're pressuring each other as much as they're going to get pressured on Saturday. That's what we. That's 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 the benefit of it, and that's why it's you know that's why those things are important and more important this year than any time that I can remember. Because last year, you know, we knew guys. I mean, we knew Justin Green could play. I knew when he played against St. Bonaventure, he was going to be ready to play. Not just ready to play, let me take that back. It was going to be effective. You know, whether he played well or didn't play well, you know, some games you play well, some games you don't play well. Guyton, Perini, all those guys, we knew they could play. Uh, these guys, you know, I go back every night and, and I wonder, is are, are they good or are we just good against each other? So Saturday will be the first time that we get a chance to at least get an idea. Yeah, yep, and that's closed. It's it's a you know it's one of those things. Uh, the NCAA allows you to have. Uh, I think you could do two of them. You're allowed two scrimmages. You could either play two exhibition games. You could do one and one. You could do two closed scrimmages. 
I think uh, our thought process in terms of how, why we do what we do is the scrimmage is more uh, beneficial, in my opinion, uh, in that we're not going to just play 40 minutes. We'll play probably 50 minutes, and we do a bunch of situations, which are really good. Um, but at the same time, I don't want the November 9th when we open up to be the first time our guys have uniforms and the first time our guys play in front of a crowd. I know the crowd isn't the same as it is for a regular season game, but you still have to put uniforms on. You still have to go through layup lines. Uh, there's, you know, different lights. It's just different. You know, there's popcorn popkin, so it's just different. So it's good to do, in my eyes, it's good to do one of each because you get more work in and you play against a better team in the scrimmage. But the exhibition gives you a different feel because we go in practice gear when we play in the uh, exhibition, in the scrimmage. The exhibition, you put on a uniform, just a different feel. What situations are going to take a priority for you in the scrimmage against St. Thomas? Well, you know what? I want to see how these guys play against other guys. That's really what it comes down to. I want to see how, and again, Chris Ortiz, I'll use him for an example. Chris Ortiz has played very, very well this preseason. Uh, and we do chart it. I don't know that I have all the cumes, but I would tell you he's probably been either our leading or second leading scorer over the 10 practices. Uh, he's definitely our leading rebounder over the 10 practices. Well, can you do that against a junior in the Atlantic 10? Because uh, the starting four man in the Atlantic 10 is a junior. You know, so can you do it against him? Or, or can't you? And I, I don't know until I see him play against somebody. You know, I won't know. You know, and uh, I got two new, three new point guards, okay, three new ones. Each one of them is going to have an opportunity to play at the point. Are you going to be able to do it against an Atlantic 10 point guard? Or, or can you just do it against us in practice? You know, th those are the things I'm looking forward to seeing. That doesn't affect me at all. I, I yeah, that you know, and in fact, that actually, I, I, that doesn't surprise me one bit that he's more of a scorer in college than he was in high school. Justin Green averaged nine points a game in high school. When you play at those elite high schools, he played at Christ the King, he played at South Kent, he played with two NBA players at South Kent. You know, so you're not gonna uh, be the prime guy when you played at Christ the King. He played with a McDonald's All American, so. That doesn't surprise me one bit. That's not the issue. The issue is can you do it again? Like to me, the fact that he's scoring here, I'm glad. But the issue to me is can you do it in a game when it when it matters, you know? Uh, and we've had guys in the past that have done great in preseason and then the lights go on and it's different, you know? We've had guys that they need to play in a game before you see what they do. I, I tend to think Darren Goodson's that type of guy. I think he's gonna be much more effective against other teams than he is against our team when everybody knows what he's what he can and can't do. I just think there's a lot of a lot that goes into that stuff. What all can you uh, post scrimmage? Because I forget the rules. I don't know. Yeah. What all can you feedback when you get back there? And what, I, I don't know the answer know to that. You, I yeah, you, I really don't you know. Can't, do you know? We can't see film, and I know we can't do it. Can't do film. I don't think we can give you stats. I think I could discuss things with you. Yeah. You know, I could discuss how we played, but I don't think I could give you stats. Mm -hmm. Off the record, though, Elton, maybe I'll give you some <laughs> stats because I know you're going to badger me like you wouldn't believe. You know, going to start yet? You know what? I don't. I don't. I, uh, we're going to bring officials in on Tuesday, uh, and. Uh, that's tomorrow and Wednesday, you know, we'll have to make some decisions on on that uh, leading into Thursday, Friday's practice. We'll probably put uh, a core group of seven or eight on one team for Thursday, Friday. We've really split it each day. Uh, I've had Chris Brewer and Bryson Pope play against each other in the 10 practices, probably eight of them. Um, Today they play against each other. Yesterday they played together. But um, Thursday, Friday, I'll probably put them on the same group leading into 
Saturday because we're gonna have they're gonna have to play together for minutes. It's not gonna be a twenty minute one twenty like in a forty minute game, it's not gonna be a twenty minute one, twenty minute the other. They're probably both gonna play twenty five minutes. So there's gonna be ten minutes that they play together. So I gotta get them used to playing together. So Thursday's when we'll probably do that. But there are some spots that I'm not sure about who I'm gonna start uh on Saturday. So um I'm going to look at both scrimmages, what we did last Thursday, uh, what we do tomorrow, and sort of come up with, in my mind, who will start on Saturday. But to me, that's meaningless, too, because I still have another week of practice, another exhibition game, and then another week of practice uh, before we play Drexel. So who starts this Saturday could be very, very different than who starts two Fridays from, from now. Yeah, well, Randall's not playing on Saturday. I know that. I'm talking about going into the yeah, season. Yeah, going into the season. Right now, like where you're at right now, heading into the season, you had to say. As far as starting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Evans is starting. Mm -hmm. That I know. Randall. If Randall can play, Randall's starting. Yeah. If Randall can play, he's starting. Unless Randall were to tell me, hey, coach, bring me off the bench, me and him will have that conversation, okay. you know, probably two days prior to us playing Drexel. You know, he may say if, if he feels if he wants to do that, then me and him will talk about that. Well, three in my mind. I assume Randall plays. There's three spots: a point guard spot, four, and five. Well, you were talking about uh, Brewer and poking at each other. And, I mean, at each other in practice. So Brewer's kind of a quicker guy, and Bryce is more of a bigger guy. So yeah. that matchup. It, 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 you know what, there's days that uh, Chris Brewer plays better and there's days that Bryson plays better. They, they, those two, that's been a good competition. And they've been, uh, they've also played together some. And they're both, uh, you know, they both could play together. Both, they, they could both play together a lot. In fact, I, I expect them to both play together a lot. Uh, but for the most part, they've gone at each other. And there's times that uh, KB does things they're both very different players. So there's things that KB does better, and there's things that Bryson does better. Uh, but they're both competing hard, uh, which is the most important thing. How do you see the position of the quarterback position, though, when you've got two guys that do different things, that do more things that you throw off you, so that maybe there's not necessarily a one starter because of things you've seen in the past or because of things that you have to Yeah, I think that's more during the game, you know, not, you know, like. So not yeah, I'm not going to be rotating who starts unless one guy camp doesn't play well and the other guy. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to rotate. At some point, you got to. I'll choose who's starting, and maybe they both start. I don't know, but but I'll choose who starts, and the other one will certainly play a lot of minutes. And just like anything, I mean, if you perform well, you'll continue to start. If you don't perform well, or if you seems like you're more comfortable coming off the bench, we'll we'll figure that out as we go. I I'm so far from thinking those thoughts. That stuff really is not. It, it's not important to me. It really isn't because they're both going to play. They're both. I, I do feel confident in saying that at the beginning of the season, uh, of my top, let's just say nine guys, Chris and Bryson are in there. KB, Chris Brewer, and Bryson are are two of those nine. So uh, unless something happens between now and two weeks from now, if 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 Bryson starts, Chris is going to play. If Chris starts, Bryson's going to play. So I'm not, you know. I, I don't care about that. I, I mean, I know that kids to some degree care whose name is announced to start the game, but that stuff doesn't matter. It's not, it's not a, you know, it, it's just a different sport. It's not like, uh, it's not like baseball, where if you don't start, you, what do you pinch hit? You know what I'm saying? And you get one at bat. It's not like that. Yeah, you know, I think that yeah, yeah, I think that is a strength, Elton. I do think that's still a strength of our of our group because uh, Bryson, when they played together, and, and and this was just the last couple of days in practice, it was those two, Bryson, Chris, Dev, and Chris Evans for the last two days. Those four have played together. When uh, Chris Brewer, Bryson, and Dev are on the floor. 
Chris Brewer's played the point, Dev's played the two, and Bryson's played the three. When Chris Brewer, Bryson, and Chris Evans are on the floor, Bryson's played the one, Chris Brewer's played the two, and Chris Evans has played the three. You know, when Bryson, Dev, and Chris Evans are on the floor, Bryson plays the one, Dev plays the two, Chris Evans plays the three. When Chris Brewer, Dev, and I think I've given you all the combinations now. When Chris Brewer, Dev, and uh, Chris Evans are on the floor, Chris Brewer plays the one. So I've had Bryson play the one and the three. I've had Chris Brewer play the one and the two. Dev has basically just played the two. Chris Evans has basically just played the three. Those things don't matter. Like in our system, I don't want to say they don't matter. They matter. You have to learn different spots, but you, you just got you to play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to play. Inside, the only person that has had to sort of learn multiple spots would be Melvin Tab. Bryson's comfortable wherever you know. What the one thing about Bryson, he the, the, I've said this before. I, I think I hope I'll keep saying it. He's sort of unflappable. He just sort of plays. So if I throw him some, not that he doesn't make a mistake here or there, but he's comfortable. And what we've tried to do this year. Uh, you know, and I hope that it's effective, is we've tried to make it as simple as possible to where um, it really doesn't matter what perimeter spot you're at. The, the, what you're doing is basically the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's not scaled back. We've tried to make it more, we've tried to make it simpler. In, in our approach. So you can, so you can yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. yeah. You mentioned Chad was on, is that Wilson right? Well, Darren's just playing at the four. Yeah, now if, I, if we were to play big, there's a set that we have that he can play that it doesn't, that all the baseline guys don't matter. But I don't know how much I want to play that set, you know, how much I want to do that right now. So right now he's focusing strictly at that spot, Darren.